the deeper truth of me having a sexual addiction to pornography and, well, sex comes down to a form of escapism, whether I like to believe it or not. This is not because I literally am an escapist through and through, even in its own truth. But I could be with the possibility, within the realm possibility, be escaping from something. And it's not to deny that too hard, even if I don't know what it is yet, for some diabolical reason. Because for my whole life, I never saw myself as an escapist. Not even the things that I did avoid on purpose and consciously. Okay, so when it comes to escapism or reality or stuff like that, escape from reality, stuff like that, even in terms of entertainment, for that matter, that's what even porn is seen as, as entertainment. There has to be something that I'm running away from to be pursuing something as extreme as porn and sex. And yes, sex taps into this because sexual energy is, is valuable. That's even Lou with the alpha and semen retention, where they talk about SR being one of the most uh, brilliant things you can do, even if it's not the hardest thing you can do. This video, by the way, won't be more than 20 minutes long. We'll just try to stretch it a little longer than usual because I feel like I can make it work for a video that won't have a thumbnail, but different energy. We'll try to cut early if we have to, if something happens, but other than that, we'll just keep, keep going. No editing, just keep going. And again, no thumbnail, so just no target head for this thumbnail. So Whatever I feel like having as a thumbnail otherwise will be a thumbnail, but anyways... So, yeah, um, by the way, the title of this video, I didn't want to say it ahead of time because I, I want to relax this a little bit. But the title of this video should be uh, Understanding My Pornography Addiction Deeper and Disorganized Attachment Style. So, that's the title at least. And some other parts are heavy. I add, it's like 100 characters on max. And I know I'm disorganized. <laughs> but we'll get to that over time in the video. So, um, with porn and sex, it's like there has to be something that I'm running away from in order to have something as extreme as pornography as an addiction. And if I don't know what that is in the first place, then how do I even know that that's, that's a symptom or a problem I like? Because the addiction is a symptom, not the problem. That's the that's the consensual understanding for a lot of addictions overall. Smartphones, technology, internet, social media, gambling, workaholicism, exercise, unfortunately, drugs, alcohol, sex itself, and indeed pornography. With a lot of these addictions and things alike, the escapism is involved, obviously. But there's a part of you that does not want to face the reality that you do have in exchange for the reality that you don't have to have, which is not reality anyways, which is the artificiality of the stimulation you get from your addiction overall. So with me, with pornography and even sex, I, I dare I, I keep throwing in sex anyways because I know that it will, I will never start talking about pornography because sexuality will be involved there anyways, no matter how taboo or dark it gets. I, I, feel, I look ahead anyways. I, I prefer look ahead. If I were to ever have a sexual experiences and I still didn't hold them to high regard to even have accountability for them or even had actual shame for them, which, by the way, one of the hardest gambits of my own life story is not feeling any guilt or shame. You might think that's narcissism. Sally might be CPTSD at the very least, but I never feel guilt or shame for most things. So how do I know that I have guilt and shame with pornography if I don't even know what I'm running away from and having escaped from reality from? How do I not know my escapism and my guilt and shame if I know that I have in the first place? Because I have an addiction, simply put. There has to be something I'm running away from. There has to be guilt and shame involved, even if I deny it consciously or subconsciously. But one theory I have, before I get into disorganized attachment style, is I'm running away from my own lack of self-love. Because... I keep telling myself I'm confident in myself and that I'm an extrovert most tasker and that I'm someone who just does not give up on himself ever the whole time he's alive and has so many friends and has so many hobbies and interests and has so many ambitious name ways to make a name for himself. But at the end of the day, what does it look like I'm doing if I spend all day in my house in my in my city and hometown? Not traveling the world, not seeing new people the way I think I am. And even if I'm not being hard to harm myself at that point, what does it look like I'm doing? Without, with facing that reality without being too hard on myself. What does it look like I'm doing? Avoiding people and, and putting walls around myself, right? And that's not easy to face down if you know that you didn't mean to do that on purpose. But it still means it's happening, right? So it's like, there's got to be a way to diagnose this and, and stimulate it and other, understand it better over time without being too much in denial. This is what it comes in lieu with Carl Jung's shadow work and self-healing. It comes in lieu with that. It comes with a lot of having to face your own shadows and, and try to lie to them and accept them and heal over time. 
not all that will be easy, but it's it's usually not always worth it. So that's what Kar Young Shaw work. But enough of me saying that as well as enough I've seen as well. But you know. There's always too much fun not though. Just don't worry about it. But uh yeah, right, yikes, right. The thing one more thing I'll throw in the fray is that other than denying my lack of feeling unloved and feeling un deserving of the confidence I say I have and lying to myself about being confident and lying to myself about being high self-esteemed and all these weird delusions and confusions I have because I'll, I'll at least admit to myself that I'm confused and troubled, right? Most of the time, if not all the time. But I can never be too judgmental or non-judgmental, right? If that makes any sense. But but I'm pretty sure if there's one thing I'd be confident when I knew is that I even I lie to myself. And it's like a big thing that people don't realize. If they don't realize you can lie to yourself – they're in for a really rude awakening, really. And there are many adults older than me that are, that are like that. They're like, they don't realize they can lie to yourself. And it's like, sorry, dude. You're down for it. Sorry, really, but not to be hard on them, but just uh, different. There is so much f- f- fun in my throat. Not fair. Life is not fair. But pain is life. It's awesome. It really is all good. So, um, th- again, disorganized, but we'll get to that one more minute later, okay? I promise. Uh, fingers crossed I'm not. One more thing I might be escaping from, and guilt and shame wise, is the willingness to make mistakes. And that comes really hardcore with the idea that I never got to do what I wanted in my entire lifetime. But I probably did, right? I probably got to do something I wanted in my lifetime, if not way more than I realized. Or even I, I, I don't want to admit. Because to deny my positive neg- negative experiences in the past and memories can be a bit of an overshadowing issue in itself. Very dark thing that happens to me at that point. But it's because of what I do usually. But it just, uh, yeah, it comes down to that. I uh, I think that would just about do it. Because I didn't really explain that more, more than like a half example or more than two examples of what I'm avoiding and escaping from reality. But I hope that gives a bit of emphasis just by be talking alone on how that works. So we might be able to end off in 11 minutes. Um, let's see what I'll say about det- this organized attachment style. This organized attachment style is the rarest and most extreme version of attachment styles when it comes to your childhood rearing child childhood and ways of parenting afterwards this comes down to the four of them that are average the um secure attachment style anxious attachment style avoidant attachment style and then finally disorganized attachment style also known as fearful avoidance and it's like if you have any of these four, because it's normal to have any of them anyways, or differently, or differently. If I had to explain that any better, for some complex reason. If you have secure, you're considered not omniscient. You're more like someone who just had a healthier relationship, even if it's not perfect. The other the other ones have room for improvement, obviously, but this still means that you had a harder lifestyle than others. But I think even with the challenges that come with porn addiction, like I just said earlier, if you have those challenges, they could have easily been worse. And it also gives you room for improvement anyways. If you have that discipline being built from your own challenges and pitfalls and trap settings, that helps you anyways. So it's different. But when I'm disorganized, I am confused and complex, overthinking, overcomplicating, analysis, paralysis, being someone who just thinks he wants to be close to everyone, have infinite relationships, demon relationships with infinite numbers of people, extra remote tasker again, that crap. But wanting to be that deep and intimate with everybody and even certain people specifically and honestly anyways, and still put walls around myself to avoid them. And the way I was, this was revealed to me over time hurt because I never thought I put walls around myself in the first place. I never admitted to myself consciously that I put walls around myself because I always thought I was a, I was trying to be with people in the first place. But if that's not honest in itself, there has to be a deeper issue here. Even if it's me just avoiding myself without realizing it. Blacking out in the depths of conscious beliefs of myself. No matter why I believe consciously, I want to believe consciously. Right? Shall I in a nutshell? Shadow work and processing. But, uh, so in conclusion, I am very disorganized, but that's okay. Everyone's got some issue at some point. Not to avoid them, not to avoid their shadow. You have to work on yourself eventually, or else you'll never get to the parts of your life that you really could have. And there's not not so much that the shadow work, work will ever end. The work never ends overall. Thank you, Dr. Ron Terabound. Thank you, uh, Auntie Karen, as well, for some of those aspects of like explaining that psychologically and even spiritually. The work never ends, but if you do work on it, it will lead you to parts of your life, nonetheless, that actually will be worth it in your life time anyways. Even as you still will leave the heart of this planet with the work never being done, 
but because you did a lot of it anyways, you still did more than you needed to, which was what you needed to do anyways. So, but it helped the eyes get the parts you have that you desired. You never really need anyone or need anything, but you can always get the parts you have that you desire. So, one more time in the conclusion. I don't need my daughter. I don't need her. She doesn't need me. But if I want to be a better role model for her, I have to do this inner work. And it doesn't matter if I ever get to be with her for the rest of my life. It doesn't matter if she never were to see me as a perfect human being, which is impossible anyways. I wouldn't want to be perfect even if it was possible. Because having the room for improvement made me who I am today. With the porn addiction for 13 plus years, with the disorganized attachment style for twice that long, and even just being a person on this planet with her and other people in my life for the rest of my own days, this is what it takes to become a better person. You can't just be cursed and only cursed. That thinking never leads you anywhere. Or like, oh, past limits. The end card right now. That thinking is not only technically black pilled, sorry, but it has a way to just down spiral and negative Nancy and not all the good shit I even explained why, anyways. You want to be better. In like the last video, you want to be better in spire issues, not because they th you think they won't only fail. You won't. Trust me, you won't.